I'm Travis Gibbons. Um, I'm a PhD student at the University of Otago in the School of Physical Education, Sports and Exercise Science. For this study, we were looking at how oxygen delivery to the brain is regulated during thermal and hypoxic stress. Um, so to do this, um, we increased people's core temperature by a degree and a half and decreased it by one degree in one experimental session. Um, during these two extremes, we measured brain blood flow with Doppler ultrasound and we collected arterial blood samples. We did this study first at sea level. Once they were um, hot and cold, we made them acutely hypoxic. Um, and then uh, we repeated this uh, experiment in Cerro de Pasco, Peru at 4,300 meters um, once our participants had acclimatized to this high altitude environment. At sea level, we found heat stress didn't decrease brain blood flow or oxygen delivery at all. However, cold stress reduced brain blood flow by 30% and as a consequence, oxygen delivery by 20%. When we made our participants hypoxic during these thermal extremes, uh, we found that brain blood flow increased in response to hypoxia and that re uh, reduced some of these um, impairments in oxygen delivery to the brain. Uh, when we repeated this experiment at high altitude, we found the same reductions in brain blood flow with cold stress. Um, however, oxygen delivery decreased by a little bit more. So there's a 20% reduction in oxygen delivery with cold stress at high altitude. The implications of this are that when you're chronically exposed to hypoxia, uh, whether it be in a high altitude environment or um, a pathological condition such as cardiopulmonary disease, um, experiencing cold stress might cause some significant reductions in oxygen delivery to the brain, which could impair cognition or uh, any cognitive processes.